All right, guys, hey, thanks for joining me. John Stevens, Maple Grove Farm. Well, we know we're in North Dakota because it's a bucket and grapple, not a bale spear. Uh, just finishing up his evening chores, like a lot of us, you get home from work for the day and then you get to be a farmer for the evening. And uh, we'll follow him into the yard and see if we can't uh, get a little story from him about his farm and give us a tour. We'll see what he has to say. He might say no, we don't know yet. He's got his little gate helper there. That's pretty cute. <laughs> What am I here for? I'm here just to say hi to your dad. <laughs> that is too cute. That is too cute. Uh-oh. We got one that's gonna try and escape. I thought he was going to run right out. Would you have stopped him? Yeah. What's your name? What's my name? Yeah. My name is John. What's your name? Kennedy. Kennedy? Oh, good to meet you, Kennedy. Let's go check in with your dad, huh? When I have a birthday when I'm like 15, mom's getting me earrings. Nice. That's right around the corner. Ten more years. Yep. Ten more years. No? You're almost six, aren't you? Yeah, it's in another month. Your birthday's in another month, yep. <laughs> That's super cute. <laughs> She's gonna be the one to give us gray hair. So <laughs> more gray hair. <laughs> so you have a calf out here? No. Yeah. I got a mama. Yeah. Yeah. We only got two red calves this year. It's gonna be one of them. I know where it is. We'll go find them. <laughs> How many cows you got? Seventeen this year. Okay, nice. Few Good looking. Ago, a few years ago when we had that drought, I sold half of them just because we're so short on grass and hay. Yep. So I don't think that's him. Yeah, look at the shine on that little one. Yeah. That one slit. Yeah, they're, they're pretty cats. Yeah. That's my son's cat. Yeah. She got a, just developed a nice abscess under her jaw. It's like, got the oh. vet coming sometime here. Where's he at, KK? I think he's right there. No, that one has a one. Watch out for that cow pie. That one wasn't steaming. <laughs> them a couple years He's ago. Right there. That's your cow. Where's your calf at? Uh, <laughs> look at that little guy. You see his mom as well. He looks just like that. Yep. He looks just like Boy, that's a little cutie. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I could see uh, I could see Karen making that one a, a puppy for the house. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cap over there. Oh, she found it. Yep. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> okay, okay, you gotta quit following him, he's gonna keep walking away. <laughs> Everybody's, at least, every, you know, it's funny with the calves, at least they're all up and perky and, and happy. Yeah. <laughs> they're not tired of winter. Mama? No. Right there. She's not even friendly. She's not even. She was the only one that was kind of a little testy when she calved so far. Okay. Yeah, we, we have four left to go. One of these mamas are really nice. Yep. They're B4, funny. right? Yeah, B4. Where's B4? Yeah. Probably got her face in the alfalfa. <laughs> Where is it? All right, we made it to the shop here. <laughs> Breton's gonna. Breton. Uh, Rocky Run Angus Ranch. I'll put a link in the description. So we got to meet his uh, Spitfire, 
the the little one Kennedy that 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 I you need a you need a video of the week with her on there. I think you got a gold mine just sitting there. Um, give us a little story of of a little history of the farm and sure. who you are and what you got going on here. Yeah, like John said, name's Brent Weiss, Rocky Road Angus Ranch and Weiss Racing. Um, uh, bought cattle, started ranching in 2016. Um, basically what happened was for quite a few years my grandparents and my uncle and I talked about buying some cows to have over at the family farm. And in 2016, around this time of year, my grandpa passed away. Um, and my uncle was kind of a little bit lost, so I ended up buying ca <clears throat> cattle to have with him. And my first year, my cattle were with at their farm. And uh, before we moved on here, and uh, so I ran cattle with him for quite a few years. Um, so kind of a first generation, third generation rancher, okay. you could call it, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, this is all my own operation. Yep. He comes and helps me once in a while. I go help him. Yeah. Um, so we work back and forth all the time. Yeah. Um, but we're separate. So, nice. Um, yeah. Started out with, oh, what, I buy 20 some cows and bought a bull. And, you know, some of my cows were with some of his bulls the first year. Um, and then they came over here, obviously, after that. And I had one bull on some of my cows and from some of my first calf heifers or my replacements went in with his. Oh. To get bread with his yep. his uh, heifer bulls, <clears throat> mix and them up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So we learned to cross breeding and breeding or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> well, they're good looking. They're yeah. good looking. I don't care what Dustin says about it. <laughs> they're good looking cows, and I don't know why he talks to you the way he does. You're a pretty <laughs> all right guy. <laughs> so there's actually only two cows out here anymore that are from my original herd. Okay. Um, everything else has been I've raised. Nice. So, all nice my replacements. So. You got about a hundred acres, you said, around Pasture here? Pasture land, yep. Yeah, right across the road over here, all the way over to, you see that old building over there, the railroad tracks, that's hay land. So I hay that, and then there's some hay land in town there. And I'm picking up another, I don't know how many acres is over there, some family land. Okay. On the wife's side um, for hay land this year, too. So yeah. That'll nice. be nice, but. Yeah. And then just. You said Kennedy might get into 4-H cows? Well, Tucker Tucker will be old enough this year. Um, oh, okay. So my son now walked by a couple times. He's a yep. little more shy. The one popping the wheelies. Yep. He's popping the wheelies. <laughs> yep. He wasn't shy then. Okay. I, I come around the corner with Kennedy, and he's like, watch this wheelie. Like, oh, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my kid, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he'll be old enough for 4-H this year. They each got their own cow, okay. their own calf. This is their second calves. Um, they had each had a calf last year. We took them to the sale barn this, in January and sold them, put it in their account. So they were building up cool. some money for them. Yeah. I guess yep. when they get a little older, college or whatever. Yep. So, they can start their business. Yeah. Start their career in cows. Yep. Yeah, such a, <laughs> such a what, lucrative what, deal that is. <laughs> what a fun, like, <laughs> yay, yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah here, let's, uh, let's just waste our life with all of our time. <laughs> Nothing like being tied down. <laughs> That's right. And then we got this part of your operation, the other half. Yep. What the heck is, uh, you seem to have a lot more engine than car here. Yeah, I I used to race. I started out with those little four-cylinder cars, and then I went to a bomber, and I got out of that about ten years ago or so. Okay, and I'm I really, gonna grab and come closer sure. while you you keep talking. Okay. I really didn't have any interest much in getting back into racing, but this series in North Dakota, they're called the it's called the Western Renegade Wingless Series. And actually, over in your neck of the woods, there's the they call it the Northern Renegades. Okay, they run. Like yeah. the Ogilvy Speedway? Yep. Yep. Okay. And then UMSS also, which was Upper Midwest Sprint, sprint Series. Um, they race around there too, all down in Jackson and uh, Hussitz and um, Cedar Lake. Okay. And the northern guys, they run Cedar Lake and Grand Forks and Bemidji, um, a bunch of those over there, Superior. Yep. Um, so we're kind of just another series off of them. Um, yeah. And it's, I have never seen a more family oriented like racing class. Okay. It's, we're no joke, a big family. Yep. Um, and 
after the race is done, we get out of the cars and go visit. Yes. There's so many classes that I came from in the past and other classes that you're just, you, you, you're not friends. You're there to compete. Other. Yep. You're there to compete. And we drive hard, we race hard, but when the checker flag drops, we're all friends after that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that makes it fun. So what are, I guess just walk us around the car and give us some specs. It's uh, these cars um, are 1500 pounds with the drivers in them. 1550 minimum. Um, this is actually just a Chevrolet 5.3 liter LS engine. Okay. Out of a, this one's out of like a 01 Chevy pickup. Okay. The only thing we can do is run like a 600 max lift cam. Okay. In them. Um, otherwise, headers, intake, carburetor. That's it. That's it. Really? Yep. Okay. And so getting rid of the fuel injection and stuff, you get rid of the computer, but we still have to run the MSD box to run the ignition. Yep. So, I mean, I got it set up so I run this car off of a DeWalt drill battery. <laughs> no joke. There's a little seal on the other side where you drop your battery in there. And yeah. It, and that runs the ignition. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. So. You know the MLS is turbo real nice. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> one of our other guys, actually, one of the guy that built this engine, he races with us. Um, and the guy that runs the series, um, he had... He had a lifter bearing in the roller fail a couple of years ago. Um, and he pulled the engine down because of that. And he put that engine in with well over 100,000 miles. This one had 140 on it when I put it in here. Okay. And the cylinders in the bottom end look like brand new yet. Yeah. Yep. It's the bottom end of these engines. It's truly amazing what, how they're built and what they can take. Yeah. And then chrome molly frame or? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Chromoly. Um, I'm not a TIG welder, but that's the only way you can weld them. You can technically weld chromoly with a stick, but not per the rules. Okay. It has to be TIG welded. Okay. <laughs> Off camera, we'll talk about welding chromoly with a wire feed. <laughs> oh, it can be done. Or I know. Gas welding yep. works good. Yep. It. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so 1,500 pounds. So they, they kind of watch your motor specs. Um, 450 horse on alcohol, methanol. Okay, okay. So that's about what these this engine dynos at. Okay. 450 on methanol. Yeah. So then what kind of, so then you just got a simple, trans, the, the. There is none. No transmission. No, I can show you. It's a, it's a drive shaft about. 20 some inches long. Yeah. It connects the back of the engine to the, the differential, the rear end. Just through a torque converter. Nope. It's hooked directly. What do you mean, no? There's no torque converter. It is direct. Well, how do you start it? Push. There's a lever right there. <laughs> it, it engages and disengages the rear end. Oh, okay. And you disengage it and get pushed and fire it off. When you come in, you can bump throttle, unload the rear end, and pull it out of gear. Yeah. So you can just let it sit and idle. And yeah. Run. But then to get going, somebody's got to push you until it gets up. You got, you got to shut it off. And put push it, start drop it. Drop it in and push it. Yep. <laughs> That's the goofiest thing. How come no transmissions? No room. <laughs> okay, because of weight and no room. So yeah. what kind of rear end ratio then do you this is a This is a winter's quick change rear end. Um, this is a 411 rear end, but... With the quick change, you got these little quick change gears that go in the very back. So it's a 411, but actually, right now it's like a 680 something. Okay, okay. Yep, so yep. In 15 minutes, you can change your gearing. Wow. Yep, that's just the cover back there, six bolts, pull it off. Okay. Change the gears, put the cover back on, dump the oil back in it. And so, what kind of my, tire speed? What kind of tire speed are uh, you running? It depends upon the track, quarter mile track. Um, you end up running right around that 70, 80, coming into the corners. Okay. We run one three-eighths mile track up in my or Minot, uh, the Nodak Speedway. That's closer to 100 miles now. We're coming into the Really? Yeah. Jesus Christ. It's, it's wild. Holy <laughs> crap. That's yep. insane. It's it's a rush. <laughs> that is <laughs> that is absolutely insane. Yep. That is insane. Yep. That is That is very cool. It, uh, the thing about these cars, um, this class is becoming very popular. I mean, not just in North Dakota, but all the other places too. Okay. Um, 
we advertise that you can get into this class and be on the track for like eighty five hundred dollars to nine thousand dollars. Okay, nice. Which yep. You can't even buy like a peer stock or a hobby stock and get going for probably under ten to fifteen. And then you're since I mean since we, you got an, a basically stock LS. You can, I bought this rebuilding and I bought this engine for eight hundred dollars. Yep. From Thomas Motors in Pingree. Yeah. I have a Chevy pickup. The guy that he put it together for me, I just I didn't have the time to do it. Yep. It was like thirty five hundred bucks to yep. put the cam in it and basically drop it in, put the carburetor on it, and go. Go. Yeah. So your your running costs. It's an affordable sport, quote unquote. It, it's uh, probably one of the cheap. Aside from these little four banger cars, it's yep. probably one of the cheapest classes to get into, to be honest. Yeah. And yep. we run faster lap times than a lot of the super expensive modifieds and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, 1,500 pounds on 400 horsepower. I mean, that's, yeah, just over, just under four pounds of uh, four to one. Yeah, yep. It's yep. Pretty good. Four pounds of horsepower. And not to mention it's directly connected so there's nothing in the cushioning zero it's, zero efficiency loss it's all right there <laughs> yeah yeah that is super cool that is super cool yep. and so all right well <clears throat> thank you You're for welcome. the tour of the car that that was really cool i've never <clears throat> i gotta pick on jay that he's never let me play with his but uh i've never been around one really and so that that's kind of neat to see yes and uh and a good sport like that, you know, we, we always joked with our radar running of the sleds. It was that same, you know, you're, you're swapping parts and sharing a sandwich while you're competing on the ice. Yep. And uh, that's what makes the sport fun. And uh, so we'll <clears throat> thank you for the tour of the farm. Um, maybe we'll go look around. I don't know what we're going to do. It, it, my tummy growled. We might have to go for pizza. I don't know. But, um, yeah, beautiful farm. And it, it's a little chilly today. Your spring, your spring is kind of delayed. It's going to be delayed all the time. A, there's a little bit of snow left. Um, like you were saying, that's probably some of the deepest snow you've seen in a long time out here, out in the fields. And uh, so you guys are expecting mid... That sun's got to get awfully hot for, yeah. for uh, anything to happen. We're two weeks away from even above 30 degree temperatures yet. Yeah, so yeah. Our biggest concern is, you know, this cold weather is going to hold off long enough and it's going to turn warm and it's all going to melt at once and we're yep. just going to have a disaster. Another Nebraska, Seward, Nebraska yep. flooding. Um, our saving grace is no frost. I think we're lucky right there too. We, yep. don't, we don't have much frost either. So hopefully it's, it's melting because we got an inch of rain. I don't know if you guys got that inch of rain. Nope. So we got an inch of rain back in February at some point. It was this be most beautiful summertime inch of just a slow soaking all day. Ruined the snow for snowmobiling for off trail riding. But all that soaked in and so we're hoping the, the snow pack is melting from the bottom up as much from the top down. So hopefully we don't get too many like you said, hot weather or, or big, big rains yep. that just make a mess out of everything. We, sh Yeah, mid-April, I'd like to think, I don't know if it's possible with that much snow. We'll maybe see bare ground by mid-April. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in two weeks, this snow ain't going to be gone. You guys. We'll be lucky if we get rid of our snow banks by July. <laughs> so if you. Fourth <laughs> of July. I know under our cow pack, there might be some ice under that thing for July. I've seen that before. We had manure piles like your snow pile there. And in July, there was still ice underneath them. Yep. But at the time, the ground had four feet of frost. When, when you put the manure pile there, back when we had the dairy, it, uh, so when is your normal, when is your normal start getting going on spring crops? Generally mid to late April. Okay. They're going in the fields. Okay. So okay. you're going to be a couple of weeks late. At least. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully the, you got enough hay to get you to green up. Yeah. I plan for November 1st to June 1st. Okay, nice. That's usually my plan. So nice. If I can kick him out sooner, it's a bonus. <laughs> yep, yep. There you go. There you go. And so, all right. Well, that's that interview. Yep. I don't know. Hopefully you had fun. It was and good time. Uh, we'll go from there. Well, that's a fine next morning. Got about an inch, inch, inch and a half of dust. 
Ha! Gonna make today a sloppy drive home.